think I think Ryan Garcia punches harder than Tank. Ryan Garcia punches harder than Tank. He just and then bro, he throws these fucking hooks at like fucking like like fucking two hundred miles an hour. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So what you just heard was the voice of former lightweight title contender, star boxer, Rolando Roly Romero, who is now 14 wins, one loss, no draw, 12 wins by way of knockout, 27 years of age, 5 foot 8 with a 68 inch arm each. Roly Romero is now a junior welterweight, 140 pounder title contender, and he has a fight coming up against Al Alberto Pulo that is going to take place May 13th, and that's for a title, okay? So, um, Roly Romero, his last fight, the last time we saw him in the ring was when he faced off against undefeated three-division world champion superstar boxer Javante Tane Davis, to which Roly was knocked out in the sixth round of that fight. But shockingly, shockingly, Roly Romero, who sparred and has a history with Javante Tank Davis is who Javante Tank Davis is 28 wins, no loss and no draw, 26 big wins by way of knockout, 28 years of age, five foot five with a 67 inch arm each. He has a mega massive showdown April 22nd, Las Vegas, Nevada, with a guy Roly is very familiar with and another rival of Roly Rolando Romero, and that's undefeated lightweight junior welterweight Mexican superstar title contender King Rob Ryan Garcia or Dare I say King Ryan Garcia, okay, who is uh, 23 wins, no losses, no draw, 19 wins by way of knockout, 24 years of age, 5 foot 10 with a 70 inch arm each. Roley and Ryan has a history. Roley does not like Ryan Garcia, uh, nor does he fancy Javante Tank Davis too much. They're cordial, but they're rivals of Roley Romero. But Roley, he states that. Ryan Garcia, who we know had sparring sessions with Roley, where Roley continued to confront Ryan Garcia at events to push for a fight. Roley stated that Ryan Garcia was sparring 10 and 12 ounce gloves and even bigger at times. Gloves and sparring hits harder than the knockout artist himself. Javante Tank Davis hits harder, hits with eight ounce gloves. So Roly Romero in this interview, he states that Ryan Garcia throws his hooks at 200 miles an hour. He throws all his punches at 200 miles an hour, but his hooks at 200 miles an hour, you don't see him. And he has a lot of power on him and a lot of pop on him, even with 10, 12 or even bigger gloves. And those punches are harder than Javante Tank Davis's punches with eight ounce gloves on. OK, now. Some people may look at this and they may say, well, that's just Roly just upset and mad at the fact that Tank knocked him out under the lights when it all counted. But keep in mind, Roly don't fancy Ryan Garcia either. Now, he did get knocked out under the lights versus Tank and he did push for this fight, but he don't fancy Ryan Garcia. OK, and so with that said, he's uh, he's actually been in the ring with both guys. And for him to say that Ryan has more pop with those big gloves on, well, that speaks volumes coming from a person that's a mutual opponent for both. Now, they didn't he didn't fight Ryan with eight ounce gloves, but he felt the power of both guys, clearly, right? And so he's saying that Ryan hits harder. Now, speed equals power. And Javante Tank Davis, he's well aware of Ryan Garcia's hand speed and ultimately his power. And Javante Tank Davis, he says, in this training camp, this buildup for this fight, this preparation and this sparring, he is preparing by working on his defense, staying elusive. He says, Ryan Garcia, well, he will not be hitting me with that hand speed and that power. So my defense is my focal point. And he stated he may think I'm not paying close attention to him, but I'm paying attention. I watch everything Ryan Garcia does. So Javante Tank Davis is well aware of Ryan Garcia's uh, threat. And speed equals power. Speed equals power. And it's the punches that you don't see that hurt you the most. And so Ryan is saying the fact that he throw these punches at 200 miles an hour on, on fact that he already is heavy handed and he has blazing fast hand speed and it's the punches you don't see that hurt you the most. 
that he hits harder than Javante Tank Davis with eight ounce gloves on. Now, every boxer or anybody who got in the square circle that'll tell you, hey, man, when you put those eight ounce gloves on, it's a whole different type of feeling than being in sparring. That's why you have a lot of guys who are sparring champions, right? Like Iron Mike Tyson stated in a recent interview with Ryan Garcia. And Iron Mike Tyson, he was one of the most feared men on the planet, baddest man on the planet, iconic Hall of Fame superstar. And he told Roly Romero, he said, I used to be in the sparring sessions with this guy from Atlantic City. He said, this dude gave me all types of problems all the time. But he was never a champion when it came to under the lights. He said, I knocked the dude out one time in all the sparring sessions we had. And he used to whip me in every sparring session. And I got lucky with one and knocked him out. He said, but people didn't see that he used to work me in every sparring session. And then when it counted, he couldn't he couldn't materialize as a champion. So Mike Tyson said, man, he was at a fight and he told him, man, do what you do when you when you fight me in sparring. But everybody's not built to do that. And speaking of which, it's those eight ounce gloves. It's the the moment. It's the lights. And ironically enough, that's why I feel like Javante Tank Davis is going to win this fight, because I can't reiterate this enough, is that. It's experience, the experience under the lights. It's not the lack of talent on the part of Ryan Garcia. It's not the lack of skill set. It's not the lack of power or speed. No, it's just the experience. You see Tank Davis, how he set this knockout up over Roley, right? He did that with his feet, with his ring IQ. And that's what gets overlooked because everybody is enamored with Javante Tank Davis's ability to punch, his power. Everybody focus, focuses on his ability to knock uh, uh, fighters out with one punch like he did Roley. Tank is not the biggest guy, but he knows how to set you up. He knows how to put you in position where he can be successful, right? And Roley, oddly enough, Tank Davis stated he hits the hardest that out of anybody that he's ever faced, right? That's what Tank Davis stated. He said, Roley Romero hits harder than anybody I've ever faced. He's the hardest puncher by far. He said, yeah, he live up to the building. He got heavy hands. But Javante Tank Davis, he set his own knockout up. By using his ring IQ, his mind, and his feet. And when you look at some of the fights, even the last fight Ryan Garcia had with Javier Fortuna, there was a lot of mistakes made on the part of Ryan Garcia, although he got knocked out. He knocked out Javier Fortuna, okay, with punches that you didn't even see. But when you slow it down, you see the mistakes. You see the inexperience. You see openings that Javante Tank Davis can ultimately capitalize on. That's what you see in film study. You see these things, right? And when you have a guy who's a southpaw, who's savvy, who has a high ring IQ, whose the boxing ability is, is top notch, ultimately he can slow the fight down. He can slow down the moment, Tank Davis. He never gets flustered. He's always cool, calm, and collective, regardless of the circumstances. And he can make an adjustment and he can counter punch. So when Ro when Roley made a mistake, he made Roley pay. When Leo Santa Cruz made a mistake, he made Leo Santa Cruz pay. When Mario Barrios made a mistake, he made Mario Barrios pay. When Hector Garcia made a mistake, he made Hector Garcia pay. Now, the one thing that Ryan Garcia and his team points to is that even though Tank Davis made them pay, he was losing those fights. And I thought he was losing the fight with Mario Barrios in the first six rounds. I had Mario Barrios up five rounds to, to one, maybe the, at the very least four rounds to two. And that was backed up by the panic and the anxiety from Floyd Mayweather, who went into Tank Davis' corner and said, man, you're losing on the unofficial cards. And he was getting outboxed by Hector Garcia. But he makes the ultimate adjustments. He has the ultimate ring IQ. And he's ultimately calm, cool, and collective under pressure. Now, will Ryan Garcia be cool, calm, and collective? Will he be able to stay disciplined on defense? Will he be able to stay disciplined and under control with his offense? 
or is he going to get over excited with his power and overextend himself, make a mistake that Tank going to make him pay for? And we'll see whose power comes out on top. Who power reigns supreme April 22nd, Las Vegas, Nevada, T-Mobile Arena. And that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV, all one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share these videos. Drop a comment in the comment section. Do you think Roley is right saying Ryan hits harder than Tank with 10 and 12 ounce gloves than Tank hits with 8 ounce? Let me know what y'all think. I'm going. Peace. Hi, my name is Heather Bahid Hardy, and you're watching Blue Blood Sports TV.